Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rachakwadash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bashum Yahweh Shai. The elect will know the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son before Yahweh Shai returns. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video, you know, which this will be probably my third or fourth time doing a video like this, is because you still got false Israelite groups out there teaching and pushing that nobody is going to know the name of the Lord until Yahweh Shai returns. But that's not according to biblical prophecy. Because according to biblical prophecy, the elect, whosoever they may be out there, they're going to know the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son before Yahweh Shai returns. And in this video, I'm going to prove that the elect is going to have the name of the Lord and his son before Yahweh Shai returns. So <clears throat> Proverbs 30 verse 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? Now, every verse that is written in the Holy Scriptures is written in here for a reason. As it is written, everything that was written aforetime was written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the Holy Scriptures, might have hope. Just roughly paraphrasing. So... This, this is just not any old question, man. This is a very serious question. You know, how the hell is you going to worship something but not know the name of it? Here it is, the Chinese people, you know, and, and the, uh, the so-called East Indians, they worship a false deity called Buddha. Do you think they go around saying, oh, statue, how great thou art? No, nah, they call on Buddha. Okay, East Indians, they worship Ashtaroth, Shiva. You know, you think they go around saying, oh, oh, idol, oh, God, you know, you know, yada, yada, blase, blase. Nah, they make sure they call on their false gods. Okay, there, there's no breath or, or power in these gods. But the example that I'm making here is that whenever these heathens worship their gods, they always make sure they call upon their names. So here it is, Israel, the Israelites, they have a God, but you mean telling me he, he don't have a name? You mean telling me he's not going to manifest his name? You know, we're just going to be calling on God and Christ and Lord and Most High, you know. You see, what you people don't understand, especially you Christians, Okay, especially IUIC, ISUPK, GOCC, and you other false Israelite groups out there. What you don't understand is that the Most High is a title. God is a title. Okay? The Lord is a title. The word Lord goes back to the Hebrew word Adon, which means ruler. So the Lord is... It is a title, okay? Don't you know that the Israelites are called gods in the book of Psalms? So when you say God, you got to specify of what you're talking about, man. Because the Most High is a God too. <laughs> Yahweh is a God. The angels are gods. So you got to be specific. The Most High is a title. The Lord is a title. God is a title. You know, even uh, Christ is a title. You know, which we say Hamashiach, which is the Hebrew way of saying anointed. 
But those, those, those are just titles, man. Okay? There's a difference between a title and a name. When you go to stand in court and you're standing before a judge, you're not saying judge. You know, you're 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 you you're going to make mention of, of the judge's name. If you're walking down the street and then a, a female says, hey, boy. Uh, are you going to turn around? Nah, she got to specify who she's talking to. She got to mention a name or something. You know, I'm not somebody who easily responds to a boy. <laughs> you know, I'm not a boy first off. But, you know, I'm, I'm just giving an example. Boy is just a title given to a, a, a young male. Girl is a title given to a, a, a young female. A woman is, is a title given to a female that is of a mar marriageable age. A man is... It is a title given to a male that is able to bring forth, that, that is able to get a, a, a female pregnant. So there is a difference between titles and names. And the Most High and his son, they have names. And they have Hebrew names at that. Okay, now I'm using the app on my phone, so. <clears throat> Let's go to, let me see. Yeah, I think, I believe it is the book of Exodus, the third chapter. Okay, so. Here we go. Now, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The power of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Okay. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, have, uh, have sent me unto you. Now, Moses didn't go to the children of Israel saying, I am, have, have, have sent me. Because then that wouldn't make no sense. They'd be looking at Moses like, this dude sent himself? Nah, you would translate that to, he is. How do you say he is in the Hebrew? Yahweh. That's how you say the Most High's name. It's he is. Because during this, during around this time, when the Lord was speaking to Moses, Moses was speaking Hebrew, okay? He, he wasn't speaking Egyptian. He wasn't speaking Arabic, okay? He damn sure was not speaking Greek. Greek did not come about until, until uh, Alexander came, rose up into power, okay? So by process of elimination, you know, Moses was speaking Hebrew, okay? Now, the Holy Scriptures is written in English, but during this time, Moses was speaking Hebrew. So, in the Hebrew tongue, you would say he is by saying Yahweh. That's how you say the Most High's name in the Hebrew tongue. It's Yahweh, okay? So, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh have sent me unto you. So Moses went telling the children of Israel that Yahweh, which means he is or he exists, ha have sent him to the children, children of Israel. OK, and then it goes on to say, and God said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord, when you see the Lord in all caps, that's Yahweh. OK, the Lord, the power of your fathers, the power of Abraham. The power of Isaac and the power of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, forever. Malachi 3 and 6. What did the Lord say? He don't change. Forever. That means even to this very time, his name is still Yahweh. So, you know, where do these guys get this idea 
that we're not going to know the Most High's name until Yahawashai returns. If, if, if the elect does not have Yahawashai or Yahawah's name when Yahawashai returns, then who the hell is going to be saved? This is the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he, the key words there is he and save, for he shall save, he and save. How do you say that in the Hebrew? Because during around this time, the Israelites were still speak, speaking Hebrew. <laughs> okay? He shall save, he save. How do you say that in the Hebrew? Yah, that, which is Hebrew for he, save. Or, or another word for save is Hawashai, or, or uh, another word for save is a deliverer, or, you know, how would you say that in Hebrew? Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins, okay? Now, this is the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21, because according to this particular verse right here, the elect is going to know the name of Yahweh and Yahawashai before Yahawashai returns. They're going to be delivered through this name. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashum, Yahawashai, shall be saved, ye men of Israel. Okay? And this is a future prophecy. Because what is the elect going to be saved from? The prophecies that are written in the Holy Scriptures. They're going to be saved from, you know, the, the ones who are meant to survive until Yahweh returns. They're going to be saved from martial law, from concentration camps, from beheadings, from summary executions, from monstrous apparitions. They're going to be saved from the beasts of the field, newly created beasts. They're going to be saved from the race wars, the civil unrest and the civil wars. They're going to be saved from the nuclear war. <laughs> okay. That's who they're going to be saved from. So, yeah, it, it is crucial that Israel knows them names because that's how that's how the elected Israel is going to be delivered. Okay. So that's a cut right there. Now, let me get this too. Then I'm going to close it out. So, you know, I'm at work. So. So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So how the hell is, is uh, the name of the Lord going to be a strong tower if nobody's going to know the name? You know, it don't make no sense. Which means... The, the elect of the nation of Israel, they're going to have the name of the Lord so they can receive that protection, the protection from those prophecies, you know, from the famine and disease warfare, from the civil war and so forth. You know, they're going to receive that protection from the Lord because the scriptures say, behold, my servants shall eat. But how shall the Lord's servants eat if they, if they won't know his name? Which means they're going to have to know the name of the Lord in order to receive that that salvation from the famine and, and disease warfare and from martial law, civil unrest and so forth. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and is safe. So according to this verse, the righteous, which is which is the elect of the nation of Israel, they're going to have the name of the Lord before Yahweh returns. In order to be beamed up in the chariots, you're going to have to know the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay? Also, I believe it's in the book of Matthews, but the, the scriptures speak about how there's one mediator between men and, and, and the Israelite men and the Most High. And that's who? The man Yahweh Shai. So, you can't just know the name of the Father but not the Son. You got to have both the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son in order to be delivered. That's why we say Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, which means he is. Bah, meaning, which is Hebrew for in. 
Ha, which is Hebrew for thee. Shum, which is Hebrew for name. And then Yahweh Shai, which means he delivers or he is the deliverer. So it's important you say Yahweh Bahashum Yahweh Shai. Because the Lord Yahweh, he's he's the one that's going to send his son back to deliver the elect. OK, and, and the ones that are of the elect who died faithfully for this word, they're going to be the first ones to be risen up with Yahweh Shai. But the ones that that are going to be beamed up in the chariots, they're going to know the names of the heavenly father and his son in order to receive that salvation from the nuclear destruction. With that, I'm going to say. Yeah, Shalom is on to the next one.